Hello and welcome to another edition of Remy's Rave of the Day. I'm your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. The word that we're going to be raving about today is the word hope. Hope is the word that we're going to be raving about today. When you do a New Testament search, a New Testament search of the word hope, the book that comes in first place is the book of Romans. The book of Romans comes in first place recording hope at 17 times. 17 times the book of Romans records the word hope. But as Bible students, we get a little bit deeper and we do a count by chapter. That's every chapter in the New Testament. Testament and Romans chapter 8 comes in at first place six times. Six times Romans chapter 8 records the word hope. But again, we get a little bit deeper and we ask the question, where does this word hope occur the most in a chapter that has a few verses in it? Where does this word hope occur the most in a chapter that has a few verses in it and it is not Romans chapter 8. It is Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 records the word hope four times, but Hebrews chapter 6 has 20 verses in it as compared to Romans chapter 8 with 39 verses. So that is why we shift our attention, we focus our thoughts in Hebrews chapter 6 and we look at what is so special that the Hebrew author has to write the word hope four times in just 20 verses. Let's grab our Bibles, Hebrews chapter 6, and we're going to start at the very end of chapter 6 so that we can grab a few points, briefly discuss them about the word hope. Hebrews chapter 6, and let's look at verse number 19. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19, here's what it says. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast. Sounds like the song that we sing, we have an anchor. It goes on to say, and one which enters within the veil. Who is that? This person enters through the veil. This person is a hope both sure and steadfast. And we get the person who the Hebrew writer is talking about. It goes into verse 20. Look what it says. Where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us. So we can say hope. How it's being used here in Hebrews chapter 6 is that number one, Jesus is the hope. Jesus is our hope. And then you back up to verse 18. Look at verse 18 of chapter 6. Even though it's in the middle of a thought, it says, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who are taking refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. We just said in verse 19 and 20, Jesus is our hope. He is the hope that is sure, that is steadfast, and now he is the hope, verse 18, Hebrew writer says, that you need to take a hold of with two hands, not with one hand, while your other hand is grabbing a hold of something else. You grab Jesus with both of your hands and you hang on. And it's pretty interesting how the Hebrew writer has been talking about this idea of holding on, holding fast. If you don't believe me, look in your Bibles and go to chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 14. Chapter 4, verse 14. Notice this. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, here it is, let us hold fast our confession. Remember, you go back to chapter 6 in verse 18. It says, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. Go back to chapter 3 and notice this. Chapter 3, oh, let's say verse number 6. Chapter 3, verse 6. Look at this. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold Fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. Go to verse number 
1. Verse number 1, notice this. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest our confession. So he's been saying this idea of Jesus is our confession. He is our confidence. And we have got to hold fast to him. Confession, Jesus is the son of God. You hold on to him. He is our confidence. He is our hope. So we're just making a couple points saying in Hebrews chapter 6, how hope is being used there is that number one, Jesus is our hope. And then number two, according to verse 18, we have to hold on on to that hope. We hold on by being steadfast, faithfulness. But here's where I think hope in Hebrews chapter 6 is really, really special here. It's this idea of, okay, how did Jesus become our hope according to the context of chapter 6, chapter 5? And the reason why I include chapter 5 is because we have to remember what the author of Hebrews is doing. And here's what he's doing just really quickly. This is a sermon. This book is. Chapter 13, verse 22 would prove that. It is a word of exhortation. And his sermon is basically about proving Christianity from the Old Testament. So what he's going to do is he's going to grab all these Old Testament scriptures like Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, Psalm 110, verse 4, Psalm 95, 7 through 11, Psalm 8. He's going to grab those Old Testament scriptures and prove Christianity, prove that it was ultimately talking about, referring to Jesus. And here's how that point plays into that question. How did Jesus get to be our hope? Well, look at the very beginning of verse 18. You notice how it says, so that by two unchanging things, as Bible students, we ask, what are those two unchanging things? There's things in which God had promised and he says, it's never going to change. Even though the law of Moses would eventually come and have all these regulations and rules and everything. But the Hebrew writer says, but before the law came, there were two promises that were made that are very significant things that were never going to change. And so again, as Bible students, we ask, well, what were those two unchangeable things? Number one, we back up to verse number 13, chapter 6, verse 13. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. God says, I'm going to make a promise to you, Abraham. And then here we are. Here's that promise, verse 14. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you. But we should also add some promises that the Hebrew writer doesn't include here. We're not saying that he made a mistake, of course, by not including them. But this promise right here in verse 14 comes from Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. The idea of Abraham, I promise I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to give your descendants a land. And then he says, in your seed, you remember this, in your seed, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. When you look at those promises, and especially the promise right here in verse 14, you notice how he says the word will. I will do this. I will do that. Not a matter of if I'm going to do this, but a matter of I will do this. And we find out later in Galatians chapter 3 and about verse 16 that when he made that promise to Abraham in your seed, he wasn't talking about seeds, but one seed, talking about Jesus. So Jesus is the fulfillment of this Abrahamic promise. That would be one of the things, verse 18, those two unchangeable things. That's one of the unchangeable things. That promise. But then what is that other thing? Because it says two, so what, are, what is that other unchangeable thing? Well, again, that's why I added chapter 5 into all this mix. It's because chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Hebrews, the Hebrew writer is talking about Psalm 110 verse 4, proving Christianity from that passage, proving that it actually referred to Christ. Because Psalm 110 verse 4 says, you are going to be a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And then it's going to go, it's going to, go on to say, the Lord is not going to change his mind about such things. And I'm paraphrasing there, but he's not going to change his mind about things. He's not going to change the fact that Jesus, you are going to be a merciful, great high priest. You're not going to be a priest after the Levitical priesthood. But according to the order of Melchizedek, that priesthood, 
That, verse 18 of chapter 6, is the two unchangeable things. God made those two promises before the law came into play, which would play into Hebrews chapter 7 saying, basically, look, since Jesus, rather, God, made these two promises about Jesus, about the seed, the promise to Abraham, him being a high priest, guess what? The Levitical priesthood, the law of Moses, it had to eventually go away. It needed to go away because of those two promises. Because the Hebrew writer says, God is not going to change his mind. Verse 18, how does it put it? He, it is impossible for God to lie. God's not going to go back on that promise, right? So that's why he mentions two unchangeable things, Abrahamic promise and the promise to Jesus, you are a high priest, which goes back into Hebrews chapter 5. And that is how Jesus becomes our, what we're raving about, hope. That's how he became our hope, according to Hebrews chapter 6. And because that's how he became our hope, verse 18, we lay a hold of Jesus, that hope, and we hang on for dear life until he calls us home, until the very end. We hold fast to our confession and our confidence. We do not let him go. We do not grab him with one hand as we're grabbing on to something else. That's not how that works. We grab hold, hold on to him. Hold on to him through this life. And trust me, it is worth it in the end. Knowing that in Hebrews chapter 6, he talks about this heavenly city which God has prepared for those who are holding on to that hope. We cannot be like the Hebrew Christians, these Jewish Christians who are receiving the book of Hebrews. We cannot be them in such a way like this. Verse 12, it talks about they were being sluggish. You go back to chapter 5, verse 11. They were dull of hearing. They were hesitant to hear about Jesus the Christ, Jesus becoming God's king, and also the high priest. That's why he says in chapter 3 as well, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Because when you harden your hearts, your heart becomes unbelieving. It's a straying heart. And when your heart's like that, guess what? you cannot enter into his rest. That's why some of the Israelites did not enter into the rest, the promised land, because they hardened their hearts when they heard the voice of God. So we hold on to that hope. Jesus is our hope. He became that hope because God made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to David saying, you are my high priest. Someone's going to be a high priest. Your descendant, David, according to the order of Melchizedek. We're raving about the word hope in Hebrews chapter 6. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate the encouragement. Please consider liking and sharing this video as well as liking and sharing our page. This is episode 33, raving about the word hope. Please come visit us. Please come see us at the Meadows Church of Christ. We're at 9195 Dishman Road. 9195 Dishman Road. We worship Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. and Bible class at 11. 11 a.m. We meet back on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. and in the middle of the week at 6 30 p.m. Again, we love for you to come see us. Please come see us so we can love on you, hug on you, and care for you. Again, I've been your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas, raving about the word hope, episode 33. Again, please consider liking and sharing this vid video as well as liking and sharing our page. Lord willing, we'll do this again all tomorrow around 3 p.m. Raving about another word or phrase. Again, this has been Remy's Rave of the Day. Have a great rest of your day. Continue to have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, around 3 p.m. Godspeed.